and that the word will encourage you this morning. You are welcome to your praise God in spirit and in trust and in lifting up the name of Jesus. We thank you and please know that you're always welcome to worship with us at Cedar Cross. Our scripture for the week is Philippians 419. But my God should shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And that's very true. Um, uh, now, I'm going to ask Deacon Ford to give us a sign before I do the offering. And it will be a sign of his choice. Usually, I, I ask him to tell you what to sing, but today, I'm going to let him the Lord decide what they want to give you this morning. Let's all say amen. amen. Since this is the first Sunday, I think we should do a communion song. Is that all right? Yes, all right. All right. And uh, she can catch up with me because I might start in one key one time and another key another time. That's just the way I say. All right, Andrew. When on the cross of Calvary. The Lord was crucified. The mob stood round about him and mocked him till he died. Two thieves were nailed beside him to share the agony. Good morning, good morning. 
Amen. 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 Got a whole another extra hour of sleep this morning. Good yes, morning. Sir. Good morning. Yes, Good morning. Yes, Come on, somebody yes, say something to me. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Um, we had a wonderful time last Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to share with you, that was just, that was a glimpse of what we can do when we do it together. Amen. Hallelujah. So the thing is, is if we stick together and do it together, on one accord and the right, and the right mindset, uh, we can do that where the, the, the place is like that every Sunday. Amen. But our job is to do what? Be excited about the Lord. Hallelujah. Be excited about the Lord. Others want to know what all the excitement is about. Yes. If they want to know what the excitement is about, they're going to come to where the excitement is. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit has the power to draw them and right. keep them. Amen. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Our job is just to love with the love of God and let God's power and spirit do the rest. Yeah. Amen. So I got a witness. Yeah. Amen. I want you to thank uh, Pastor Wes and Pop that came down yesterday. It was it was one of the, 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 the slowest days that we've had. Um, we didn't get very much of anything, but it was a clear indication of how God was in. But Jesus took two fish and five loaves and fed a multitude. Amen. And so he took a little bit and made sure that it was still over 100 people that got fed. Yes. So God was good. And that being said, um, for, for, for our Cedar family, I usually try to bring stuff up. And uh, yesterday it was done to bring, but I want you to know if you want something, uh, you ought to come get fed Wednesday at Bible study. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you never know what might be lingering in the bed of my truck. After hallelujah, my hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, amen. So God has been able to bless us in abundance, whether it's on that Saturday or whether it's during the week. He's put people in place who want to make sure that the people of God are, are blessed. All the time. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'll get the word if I'm going to be able to have my hands on some turkeys. And if so, if I give you a turkey, I expect to come and have some turkey. <laughs> if you can't cook a turkey, please don't take a turkey. Praise the <laughs> Lord. Amen. So Amen. 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 If you will, meet me over in the gospel, in the, in, in the book of Acts. Acts of the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to tiptoe through chapter number 16. And for our reading, I'm just going to read just a couple of passages. And then we'll be able to get into this. Um, so that we can get some understanding. Amen. Let's look over in verse number 25. Acts 16, verse number 25. The word reads... About midnight. When, when did he say? It was about what? Midnight. He said about midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Yes, sir. Verse 26 said, suddenly. Somebody say suddenly. Suddenly. There was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the jail was shaken. And immediately, somebody said, right now, right there. Right now. Right now. All the doors were open and everyone's chains came loose. Mm. When the jailer woke up and he saw that the doors of the prison were standing open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself since he thought that the prisoners had escaped. Mm. But Paul called out in a loud voice, don't harm yourself because we're all, we're all in here. Mm. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. He escorted them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Then they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him along with everyone in the house. He took them in the same hour of the night and he washed their feet and their wounds. Right around, uh, or right away, he and his entire family were baptized and saved. For a few minutes, if I can use as a subject, I just want to use as a subject. When you use, oh, I'm 
sorry. When all you have is all you use. <laughs> Somebody say, when all you have, when all you, have, when all you, know, when all you know, is what you use. Is what you use. Amen. Take this. Father, thank you now for this time that we have to share. Speak over us, all of you, none of me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. When we look at this passage of Scripture, and we look at it in its, in its entirety, what we look at and what we realize is that Paul and Silas was on a ministry, a ministerial journey. They was on a mission. Mm -hmm. And their mission was to go out and spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. But I need you to know and understand that any time that you're on a mission for the Lord, there is going to be opposition. Amen. Simply because the enemy realizes that the more you equip the saints of God, the more trouble you present to his kingdom. Amen. Amen. For we know that God has called him to be the prince of the air. So God has given him the okay to rule for a time. And this is the time that he's ruling and, and his desire is to do what? Get as many folk in his kingdom as he can. Yes, sir. Because the more folk he have working for him, the less folk that it will be promoting to heaven. Amen. Have I got a witness? Right. That's the reason why the Bible clearly says that you've got to choose ye this day whom you will serve. Mm -hmm. It clearly speaks to us and lets us know that we cannot serve two masters. Amen, right. amen. The Bible says that we've got to love one and hate the other. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. But the problem is, Brother Mike, the problem is this, that, that we say we hate the devil, but yet we still allow the devil to use us. Amen, amen. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. The, the, the biggest part with church folk that I find out that the devil uses is when we got folk that want to go in the parking lot to preach after the preach, the message has already been preached. Yeah. They don't prophesy, but they prophesy. Have I got a yeah. Amen. They go out there and hurt folk with their own interpretation or their own uh, 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 religiosity. They want to go and they want to switch around. They got the word according to themselves. Amen. And what they don't realize is that when you put things out into the atmosphere, um, 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 the enemy knows how to make sure that the atmosphere is permeated enough that the person that you're talking about just so happen to hear enough that it does what? Vex their spirit. Yeah. 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 You didn't just came out to church shouting, amen, you're still wiping the sweat for the phony shout that you had all up and down the church. You done gave $3 over your tithes and then you done did something. And now I think that you're holier than thou, but walk right out the door and the enemy uses you because you're in a usable space. Amen. Amen. And what begins to happen now is that when the enemy can get more of the folk that call themselves church folk, then he realizes that he can put the stigma on the church where people will say, I'd rather stay in the streets with less accountability mm -hmm. than go into the house of the Lord and bust hell wide open. Amen. Amen. So we find here that Paul, being the greatest person that he could be to be in this position at this time, uh, he was, he, he, him and Silas was on a journey that was on a mission. And, and it says when they come into this town, watch this. There was a little girl or a woman who was put in position by the, mag the, by the magistrates of that particular region, they, they, they vexed her spirit enough to where she was taunting the men, the men of God at this particular time, trying to discourage them because this is what the, the, what the enemy would do. The enemy would try to discourage you, and if you don't believe me, let's go back and read when Jesus, when Jesus was in the wilderness himself for 40 days. Remember that the enemy came against him with every tactic that he could, but Jesus did what? He allowed the enemy to understand, not only do I know the word, but I live the word. And not only do I live the word, but I believe the word. And not only do I believe the word, I know the word got power. And since I know I got access to the power, back up. Hold up, swallow up. You can't go up. Have I got a witness? Amen. So now we find that this woman is taunting Paul inside us, Mother Brian. They say, and she's saying all kinds of stuff because that was her assignment given by the enemy through the magistrates. Are you with me? Amen. And now they're taunting them, but yet Paul and Silas was just like Jesus because they stood on the word. Yes. And they understand, I'm going to help somebody right here if I can. Yes. Our problem is, the moment somebody ruffles our feathers, is the moment we put the word in a lockbox and stick it back in the car and we pull our choice words out that ain't love this, Lord. I have 
seen grown Christians cuss somebody out. And I don't mean these cuss words that you find. You don't find them words in the Bible. Amen. But they'll tell you something after it's over. They'll oh, they thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. Hold on a minute. you got to stand on the word because when the enemy comes against you, there's somebody that wants to see the character of God, the character of God operate through you. But yet God is waiting for him to shift the atmosphere. But he can't shift the atmosphere if you shift with the atmosphere. Amen. 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 Come on, with you. And it's too many of us, it's too many of us that as soon as somebody mess with us, we don't trust in the Lord. But yet we sit back and remind ourselves, oh no, the enemy reminds us of who we used to be. Yes, yes. hallelujah. Josh, and every once in a while, he, he, we go back to who we used to be. I, I remember not too long ago, I would tell people, I say, you know what, you better back up because you're making me. I, I got a one-way ticket to this city called Fresh Off of Negroes Behind. And you're making me a little bit homesick. You better back up. I, I, but I got to pray the Lord for deliverance because every time I get to that place, there's always somebody that's looking, Pastor. Mm, Have I got a witness? Yes, sir. So Paul and Silas are being taunted, but they stood on the word of God. And when they stood on the word of God, they never, they never, ever, 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 they never, ever responded to this woman until they got the release from God to respond. So in other words, they didn't react. They waited for God to respond. Hallelujah. And when they waited for God to respond and they turned around and spoke to the girl, the girl was set free of the evil spirit that was upon her. And now what that did was make the magistrates even more mad yes, because sir. what I set out to do, I couldn't do because of the power of God working on their behalf. Amen. So what do I do? I take them and I bring them into the city and we strip their clothes and we beat them the same way they beat Jesus. Yes, we beat them. We beat them. In fact, if we want to just be hood about it, they beat the mess out of them boys. Have I got a witness? Amen. And then to, to add injury to insult, the Bible says that they chained their feet and they put them not in jail. But they put them in the innermost part of the jail where there was no windows. It was cold. It was dark. It was dreary. At 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it still looked at like it was 12 o'clock midnight. Yes, sir. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And what I come to tell you this morning is there are some of us that are in the middle of a dark midnight type of experience chained to these infirmities and chained to these situations. But my question is, do you know what to do yes, based off of who you know? Yes, based off of what you know. Because if you know the man for yourself, you can get to the place where you don't have to try to figure it out, but rather all you got to do is praise it out. Amen. The Bible says that now we have Paul and Silas, they're locked in jail, but they wasn't in this cell by themselves. Mm. But what the Bible declared was that there were other prisoners that was in the cell, and they were all chained in this particular cell together. Isn't it amazing that we have a whole bunch of folks locked up in this one little place, but yet you got two people that had the mindset that no matter what we're going to do, we're going to stay focused on what we know, Amen. because I understand that that's all we got at this moment. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness? They wasn't trying to figure out if I can get a spoon and chisel my way out. They, they wasn't figuring out if they can jump on the guard and try to get it. They wasn't figuring out how to unlock the chains and stuff on their legs. But what they did was they sat content in the middle of everything that was going on and never said a word yeah, until yeah, God yeah. perked their spirit to do something. Watch this. The Bible says that about midnight. Mm -hmm. And when we ask yourself, what is it about midnight, Brother Mike? But midnight is... The quietest, stillest time yes, of the day. Yes. And that's when God does his best work. In the midnight hour is when the stars align themselves up. In the midnight hour is when most folks are resting peacefully. In the midnight hour is when God begins to move because it's a silence that's over the earth. There's no distractions, and God begins to move through the atmosphere and do the things that he wants to do. So the Bible says that around midnight, Amen. now if it's dark in my cell, if everything is going on in my cell, if all I got is myself chained to the wall, and a couple of other folks that's around, excuse me, and some of the people ain't even on my page, and I'm locked up at midnight, I ain't thinking about y'all. I'm going to be asleep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. We ain't got nothing to talk about at midnight. Yeah. Because whatever we're talking about, we can't do nothing about it. Amen. So good Amen. stories and jokes don't mean nothing at midnight. So if I can't do nothing now, I may as well go to sleep. If I go to sleep, 
I'm not worried about what I'm going through. If I go to sleep, I'm not worried. Remember, they just got beat. They got beat bad. They were hooked up real good. Somebody ought to catch this right here. Because of some people right now, you don't have the physical scars and wounds on your body. But spiritually, you have been beaten up. Spiritually, you have been abused. Somebody has whipped you up real good. And in your midnight, you laying down losing sleep. You're laying down not eating. Amen. You're laying down stressed out. Your blood pressure didn't went up. Your sugar is out of control. Everything is happening. Why? Because now you're at a place where you're depressed. You don't understand what's going on. Because it's apparently you really don't know Amen. who you should know to know. As I saw, I need to know. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Because if I knew the man by the name of Jesus, I'll rest good in the midnight hour simply because... If it's beyond what I can do, that means he tells me to cast all of my cares upon him because he cares for me. If I can lay my trouble at his feet, then I can go to sleep because he can handle my troubles better than I can. If I can do him what's on my mind, then I know that he can fix what's on my mind and I ain't going to rest because the Bible says trouble, and the songwriter says trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes, but Jesus will fix it after a while. All I got to do is hang on until after a while. A lot of times I need you to understand that if you can hang on to your after a while come, your after a while might come in the midnight hour. Yeah. And God will wake some stuff up and move some stuff around in the midnight hour yeah. if you know how to hold on until the midnight hour comes. The Bible says we may endure for a night. It didn't say how long the night would be. But joy comes in my morning. Look at this. It tells us that Paul and Silas were sitting there around midnight. And now I know that they had whips on their body popping. They had knots and bruises and they was all jacked up. They was towed up from the flow up from the beatings. But yet at midnight, instead of them, mother, instead of them complaining about what happened to them at midnight, instead of them asking can they have something to wash their wounds at midnight, instead of them, oh, it hurt so bad. At midnight, the Bible says they begin to say, bless the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my soul and all. They, they, they began to say, Jesus is on the main line. Yes, yes. Tell him what you want. Yes. They began to sing those little songs. Jesus love me, this I know. Yes. They began the song. They began to sing the song. You know, I love you. You love me. Yes. We're all a part of God's life. Come on here. They began to sing them little songs that would send, 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 send signals to heaven that they were more concerned with who God was than they were with what was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua, I want you to understand that the Bible says that wherever there are two or three yeah. touching and agreeing, and Paul and Silas, watch, the reason why they were able to not focus on what was going on with them is because the relationship that they built with God was, was, was put in position leading up to them. So watch this. They didn't wait until they got into trouble before they wanted to have a relationship with God. But they had a relationship with God while everything was going on all right. So therefore, when they got in trouble, God had already given them enough evidence that he was still God and able to do all things. Have I got a witness? Paul, 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 before his name got changed, anytime I can be the one that's killing folk, anytime I be the one that folks looking up to me in the way that I'm living wrong, but yet I am in control, and God can slap me from being high to yeah. being low. Yeah, he yeah. can slap me down for nothing, yeah. strip me of my eyesight, yeah. get my attention, then raise me up to be one of the greatest men in the gospel. Yeah. I need you to understand that all I got to do is look back to where he brought me from and realize that he's strong enough to do everything in my life. So therefore, when I get in the middle of a hell of situation, I ain't got to try to figure out nothing. I hang on to knowing what I know and I make sure I use what I know to get from where I am to where I know he knows I'm supposed to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the relationship that they had caused them to be able to stand up against this person that was speaking crazy. The relationship and the one that they knew allowed them to get beat without fighting back. The relationship that with the one that they know allowed them to get into prison in the midnight hour and not worry about their wounds but yet sing praises unto God. Because they understood that when I can shift my atmosphere here, no matter what, that what happens, as long as God does it, it will be done the right way. So what do I know? I know to lift my hands. What do I know? I know to give him praise. What do I know? To lean not into my own understanding. What do I know? Is that if he's before me, he's more than the Lord against me. What do I know? Is that 
that he said he'll never leave me or forsake me. What do I know? Yeah. Uh, is that he says if I have faith the size of a mustard seed, I can tell that mountain to move and it's got to obey. So in other words, I'm going to tell my atmosphere. Atmosphere, we might be in the dark, we might be in the cold, we might be in the middle of nothing, but I do know that my Jesus said that he is the light that lights the world. Yeah. So it might be dark, but my feet break it. I ain't got to have the light, but the light that shines from within is enough to shine and allow this place to know. Now listen, and remember it wasn't just Paul and Silas. Come on here somebody. Y'all know the story, but it was other folk that was in the jail. Josh, watch this. If I got put in prison, first off, I'm mad because I got caught. Come on. Amen. Talk to me. And if it's midnight, I'm going to be mad because you keep me woke. Amen. <laughs> uh -huh. I hear you, God. Yeah. You know all this saying. First off, if I'm in jail, I can't be too saved. Uh -huh. Amen. Because <laughs> I done did something wrong to get me put up in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. So I'm in there. I'm already mad because I got caught. Now you got the nerve to want to sing. And you wasn't singing Tupac. You wasn't singing, come on, E-40. You wasn't singing Lil Nas. You wasn't, you wasn't singing the stuff that I know. You singing this old stuff. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff I can't relate to. I can't relate to Jesus because I don't have a relationship with him. And you sing some song. But listen, the Bible lets us know in your teaching, in your learning, and when you begin to study this, you will find out that as they begin to sing, the power of the Holy Ghost that came from them, it set the atmosphere. So those that would have been complaining was now at complete attention to seeing what was going on because they're trying to figure out. How do these two boogers that got beat as bad as they got beat yeah. have the nerve and the audacity to sit here and sing in the midnight hour, yeah. hollering unto God? Yeah. And I know some of them may have said, if God is that good, then why are they in here? Yeah. 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 Watch this. Sometimes God will send the righteous in the place where the unrighteous is yes. so the unrighteous can understand the true power of the righteous. Yeah. All the fathers was in the middle of this situation and they didn't try to talk them into, listen, I know it's a whole bunch of holier than thou folks that might get caught up and go to jail. Uh, you hear that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're holier than thou, but you got caught up and go to jail. Huh? Y'all missed it. You'll catch it next week in the middle of the top of the building. You know what I'm saying. But anyway, you're holier than thou, but you're in jail. And when you get in jail, you're not being used by God to do what? Set the atmosphere. But remember, you're holier than thou. So you're trying to save everybody in the jail. Yeah. But I come by to tell you that if God does not open, the, open up the door for you to minister to them, you can say all you want to, but Asalaamu Alaikum gonna get you before. <laughs> because you got you got more salami and baloney people in jail than you do Christians that are professing. You got folks in there talking about, yeah, my brother Allah, yeah, my brother Allah, be high, be high, Allah. No, you need to have people say, God is the way, the truth, and the life. You need to have folks to say, if it had not been for him on my side, I could be face and face and face and face in the death, but yet I'm here for a reason. Yeah. And since I'm here for a reason, I may as well share the good news. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to teach you or pound up inside your head yeah. who God is. All, All right. I need to do is live the life before you. Right. So Paul and Silas did what? Yeah. They didn't go in there preaching. They went in there singing. Yeah. And when they sung, the Holy Ghost preached. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah. I want y'all to catch that. Yeah. They sung yeah. out of obedience. The Holy Ghost preached because everybody in the jail was like, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Are you listening? Yeah. Now that God had everybody's attention in the jail through praise and worship, what happened? He says that it was a violent earthquake. And God had to send a violent earthquake so that folks understand that this wasn't normal. All right, all right. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. Do you know when we come in the house of God and we pray sincerely yeah. that God will shake some stuff up and shake some stuff loose, yeah. that folks understand that this ain't a normal shake? Yeah. 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 And the reason why our churches are not filled and the reason why our churches are not helping people is because our praise and worship is watered down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We only praise and worship for show. We praise and worship because we sing good. We praise and worship because people are looking at us. We praise and worship because folks said we got a good praise team. We praise and worship because we believe that that's what we're supposed to do. We pray. Come on here, somebody. But when you give God praise and worship for what you've been through and what He's taken you through and what He's kept you from, your praise and worship is something that now releases power because you're not doing it because you memorized the song. But you're doing it because you understand the nature of the song explains why you give God praise. That's right, that's right. 
right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You heard that old song, as I look back over my life yeah. and I think things over. Yes. When I think about how good he's been to me. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. When I think about what it should have happened to me. Yes. When I think about the bullets that ran all around that came at me but missed me. Yes. When I think about the car that came through the life that should have hit me. Yes. When I think about the death that was knocking at my door. Yes. When I was thinking about how COVID tried to take away my breath. When I think about but I remind myself how good God is. And he says, get back. This is my servant. Who I will please. He will bless me at all times. He will praise my name at all times. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Yes, yes, Lord. So Paul and Silas, listen. They wasn't in jail, Josh, because they did something wrong. Yes, yes. But they was in jail because God needed to make sure that they was in position to do something right. Amen, amen. Because now I'm sitting here, Mike, in the middle of a whole bunch of people hmm. that don't necessarily know the same God I know. Yes, sir. Amen. And they're looking at me how I look. Uh -huh. And they're looking at all of us. Got one thing in common. Hmm. We chained up. Yeah. We in the dark. Yes. And it's cold. Yes, Amen. We don't know what we all did. Yes, Amen. Right. But we all know where we are. Amen. And now you got two people hmm. that got the nerve to be saved. <laughs> in the middle of the night. Yes, yes. And singing loud enough <laughs> to make sure everybody else is woke. All right. All right. Yeah. But I can't even say nothing because the power yeah. of God is so strong that it's got my yeah. mouth yeah. 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 And I need you to know that when the presence of God is, is prevalent and when the presence of God is moving, I don't care who got something to say. If it ain't if it ain't tuned in with what God is doing, then God will allow the Holy Spirit to shut the mouths. Because watch this, even if everybody in the room, Josh, don't get it, the one who God set the tone for to get it, yeah. it's got to make sure that the atmosphere is clear enough for him to receive it Amen. so that God's mission can come. And I need you to know that I don't know how many jailers, because they didn't say, I mean, I don't know how many prisoners in the jail, Mother Maddie, that was, well, was in position to be saved because they didn't yeah. talk about them. But what it talked about is when the earthquake came and when the doors opened up, it said that the jailer, the Amen. jailer was the one that got scared and was about to yeah. kill himself. Yeah. And what we don't understand yeah. is, you say, why was the jailer about to kill himself? It's because the way that the law was at this particular time is whoever was put in charge to watch the prisoners. Yeah. If anything happened to the prisoners, yeah. this, this, this jailer was now subject to lose his life, yeah. and not just his life, but they were so rude, they were so bad back in there. Then yeah. he would die, his yeah. like mama would die, his daddy would die, his wife would die, his kids would die, his hamster would die, his turtle would die, his gerbils would die, everything, his ant farm would die. Yeah, come on here, somebody. Everything had to go if he messed up. Yeah. So therefore, the Bible says that here, now that the, the, the doors was open and he began to look, and they said he was about to fall on his sword because he already knew, I'd rather kill myself than to let my kids and my wife and everybody else die because I messed up. Yeah. And the Bible says, isn't it amazing? He went from singing, now he went to speaking. Yeah. Because he told his mother, he says, hold up man, we all in here, everything is good. We are still here, yeah. don't worry about it. He came in, fell on his face and he said, what is it that I got to do to be saved? Yeah. What am I trying to say yeah. to y'all? Yeah. The reason why some folk won't come to church is because the disposition that you have uh -huh. is not conducive to who God is. Because you fall apart in your midnight hour. Yeah. You don't want to sing songs of Zion. You want to sing all of this hip to the hop. You don't want to sing. You want to sing them Teddy Pendergrass. You want to sing them Luther to the Vandross. Them love songs ain't going to get you into heaven. You better sing something that, that the heaven will begin to shift and move on your behalf. Because at the end of the day, you're responsible for your assignment. And whoever God placed in front of you, you just got to live right. You got to speak right. You got to act right. You got to love right. You got to praise right. You got to worship right. You got to give right. You got to act right. In order for your assignment to be fulfilled right. So now the jailer comes in and he says this simple thing. He says, hold up. Y'all here. I want to be saved. Yeah. And I need you to know that the Bible lets us know that if you can confess. Amen. If you can believe. Yeah. And you can receive in your heart that Jesus is yeah. in heaven with his father. Yeah. Now you'll be saved. Amen. And he says immediately at this moment, not only was he saved, think of something. Hmm. If he did wrong, everybody in his family died. Amen. He did right, and everybody in his family got saved. Yeah. But the kids ain't a member until they come and join church too. Amen. But Amen. back in the day, all it took was for mama or daddy to say, I am. I win it. Yes, let's do it. And everybody got saved.
Because the head of the house said, I'm ready to be saved. I right, right. got a witness. Yeah. So what am I trying to say to y'all up in here today? That it's too many of us that's trying to figure out something when we should be working out something that we already know. Amen. You better stop trying to come through and figure out how you're going to get out of a situation when you got to realize that if it's you that put yourself in the situation, you've got to repent and turn from your ways yeah. in order to access the principle and the power of God to get yourself out of the situation. Right. But if God puts you in that situation, you need to sit still in that situation long enough for God to get the glory out of your knowing what you know. Yeah. And if I know what I know, I'm going to sing praises whether people in the jail hear me or people right. in the dark hear me or not. Right. If I got to hum to myself, yeah. 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 Amen. understand what I'm humming, but heaven knows I said, what a friend that I have in Jesus. All of my sins and griefs he bears. When I sing these songs, I say, oh, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible, it tells me so. When I begin to sing these songs, and I begin to talk to Jesus, now the atmosphere, it settles now to a place where place. When you're singing praises unto God, Josh, I found out that whatever was breaking loose hellish in the area, but now fall subject to the power of God through my praise and my worship. Lord, I love you because you first loved me. You stretched your arms wide and died on Calvary. When you got up with all power in your hands, you told me that I footsteps and make sure that I'm used by you. Since you want to leave me here to do greater works than you do, I'll bless you in the morning. I'll bless you in the noonday. I'll bless you in the midnight hour because I realize I can be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I can be blessed when I come and blessed when I go. Jesus, he went to the cross just for me. I know that Jesus, he stayed there upon the cross just for me. All I know is that when they pushed him in the side, he stayed there just for me. When they tried to give him sour and pot vinegar, he stayed there just for me. When they talked about it, he stayed there just for me. When they took him down and put him in a ball too, he stayed there just for me. When they said, oh, oh there's something more he got up, he did that just for me.
believe you can speak it, and you come in there and start singing some peace songs. Yeah. You start singing some blood songs. Yeah. The blood that Jesus shed way back on Calvary. Yes. Yeah. Huh? You better sing it. I've been washed in the blood. I know it was the blood. You better sing something yeah. Yeah. that has to do with the blood, the power of the blood, because the atmosphere has to fall subject to the power yes. of your praise and your worship. Amen. Have I got witness? Amen. Stop looking on Google to get the answer. Mm -hmm. And open up the B-I-B-L-E. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Stop going to surprise. Look, Amazon got more of y'all right now buying books to try to help you get out of a situation. Come on here, somebody. Amen. You make Amazon rich and God says, what I got for you is free. Amen. It's for I bet you if I, if, I, if, I, if I came and sat at the front door about three of y'all house, I guarantee you, Amazon is like your best friend. You're there at least four times a week. Amen. Know you by your first name. Amen. When the package gets in the truck, you might just sit back in there all going home over the house and say, yeah. <laughs> y'all done got some good of a relationship. He know he got lunch. When Amen. He get Come on here, somebody. <laughs> but when we can depend more on Jesus, yes, Lord. the supplier of our needs, yep. when we can praise and worship, no matter what the circumstance, yes, I need you to understand, Amazon giving you something that they heard about. Amen. But Jesus wants you to have something that you should know about. Yes, yes. <sighs> have I got with me? Yes, Lord. My question to you is, what are you going to do the next time you're faced with a midnight hour? Hallelujah. Cold jail type of situation. Are you going to complain about why you're there? Or are you, are you going to praise God because you're there? People say jail. People say you can be in jail or you can be dead. Yeah. If I'm dead, I don't have a chance to praise you. Amen. All right, all right. But if I'm in jail, he'll heal my wounds. Yes, he'll, he'll, heal. he'll bring me out. Yes. I still have a chance to live. Yes. It just requires me to do what? Give him sacrifices of praise. All right, all right. Have I got a witness? Uh -huh. Amen. I want to yes, practice Lord. it. I want to see who all in here can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, don't hallelujah. Need to say, I need you to say it like you mean it. Who all can say hallelujah? Hallelujah. You know what hallelujah is, right? Come on, highest praise. The highest praise. Yes. If you can't say nothing when you're in the middle of some trouble, yeah. just say hallelujah. Yeah. If you can't do nothing while you're in the middle of some hell, just say hallelujah. Because I found out the devil is even scared of hallelujah. hallelujah. You start hallelujah and the devil, the devil don't get on that electric scooter he just bought. Uh -huh. <laughs> he keep up with you and take off and go to the other <laughs> Matter of fact, he got a turbo loop on his scooter. When you get the holler, hallelujah. Amen. The LAPD said I was trying to catch him, but he moving too fast. Hallelujah. I'm a God witness. Hallelujah. Practice your hallelujah praise. All right. All right. Watch God move mm. on your behalf. Yes. Right. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Come on, give God some praise. Mm -hmm. Let me share something with you real quick as we get prepared for our communion. I need you to, within the next week and a half, to have the families that you said. I want us to get at least two families. You guys have mentioned that you want to adopt family to bless for this holiday season. So we need to find a family for Thanksgiving and find a family for Christmas. Yeah. Amen. 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 So let us ask around so that we can get the, the information of how many people are in the family and make sure that there's no allergies. We don't want to make sure that we got them. Then we need to determine, are we just going to give them the food to cook themselves? Or do we want to prepare the meal and take it to them? Amen. So this is something that we will need to do uh, within the next week and a half or so. Because our problem as people is we always wait till the last minute. And then we have hazardly do something. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't, if, if we're doing it for God, God says that what we do for him must be done decently and in order. Yes. And it must be done with a spirit of excellence. Have I got a witness? Amen. Because at the end of the day, watch this. It's not the food that matters, but it's the love by which it was given. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Have I got a witness? Yes, sir. And at this particular moment, we want to make sure with the shortages of everything that's going on, not enough stuff in the stores, we want to give ourselves ample enough time to make sure that we have what we need, that these families 
are getting a good enough meal that they can eat off that for a few days. Amen. But that they feel the love of God. Yes. And know that God still cares for them yes. through the love of those that see the world. Amen. 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 And then the other thing I'll talk to you guys about later on, but we're coming into a holiday season, and so we need to make sure that we are spiritually motivated and festive. It ain't about the gift, or it ain't about a gift, but it's about the gift, the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to spread the love. We need to do something this holiday season that allows people to know that God is still real. All right, all right, and God is still right. dwelling in the house. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. So we'll get with you guys on that Wednesday night. Let's make sure we get some Bible study as we go a little bit deeper. And y'all don't know the grab bags I'm having the church. Mm -hmm. Am I am I influencing you to come out? Am I bribing you to come out? Yes, yes and no. Yes, yes. 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 and no. I bribed you with some, some middles, but I'm also bribing you with the middle. Amen. Right. Well, come on out and let's have a good time. We've been having a good time, have we, Mother Brian? Amen. Amen. We've been having a good time. So, Father, we thank you now for this opportunity. We thank you for your words that have gone forth. We ask you, oh God, that you just continue to have your way in our lives. Now, as we prepare, oh God, for our communion, we ask you, Lord, to clear our minds, our hearts, and our souls, that we may partake of this in a nature that pleases you. And if everyone was saved, because the Bible shares with us that we're not to take this unworthily, so if you would share, just speak this with me. Now, Father, I'm a sinner. Now, Father, I'm a sinner. Who have sinned. Who have sinned. And fallen short of your glory. Fallen short of your I ask you to forgive me now. I ask you to forgive me now. For I do not want to take of this communion unworthy. So forgive me now. So forgive me now. For all of my unrighteousness. For all of my unrighteousness. And I thank you for being a God. And I thank you for being a God. Of another opportunity. To wash me. Make me. Make me. Mold me. Mold me. And use me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.